tall and small collection. Chapter 20. Next Steps. The evening of watch was incredibly uneventful, as Soren expected, but far from quiet. He was left alone with his thoughts and silent images of the events that transpired. They played in his mind over and over again, unrelenting. If Soren didn't know better, he'd say he was in a horrible nightmare, unable to wake or save himself from in the waking world. He kept seeing Dorian on the ground, collapsing out of fear and exhaustion, the trail of blood behind him. It must have taken every ounce of his will to walk out of the walls on his own in hopes of finding his older brother. The silent image of Frey holding so still on the glue trap, saved from suffocation by pure luck. If the older human had decided to smash the trap, or if Frey had twisted more one way than the other. Storn shuddered and clasped his brother's shoulders in his hands. Both of them stirred simultaneously and pressed their faces into his shoulders. Soren hated to think of how scared they must have been, how scared they still were. In their minds, they were still in danger of being so near a human. It was only because they were exhausted and drained emotionally that they were able to sleep right now. There was one other prominent thought, one question in his mind. One that set his anger and frustration into a boil. Where was Brady? Brady had left Soren those two weeks ago and had taken up the responsibility of taking care of Dorian and Ray. Brady had practically sacrificed Soren to the human for his own personal safety and the safety of his sons. If the human weren't Ashlyn, Soren didn't think he would be alive. So, everything worked out for the best. Still, Brady couldn't have known that as he vanished into the walls, Soren sick and injured beneath the metallic bar of the trap. More importantly were the conditions of Dorian and Ray. Last time Soren saw them, they were a little thin but healthy overall. It was the borrower way of life, needing to survive and eat light. Now, Dorian and Ray both were thinner than Soren remembered. Their bodies felt bonier and frail in his grasp. Their cheeks were slightly gaunt, and the sparkle in their youthful eyes had dimmed. There were supplies left if they were rationed properly. There were more than enough places to borrow from. A single, chilling thought crept into his mind. Had Brady abandoned them too? Surely not. But how else would Dorian and Ray be left alone? How would they feel so thin? Would they have been foolish enough to go borrowing on their own again after what happened the first time? If they were desperate enough, they would do what they needed to do to survive. Soren had taught them that much, at least. Soren had the entire night to dwell on his thoughts, knowing he would have to wait for the answers he was looking for. In the meantime, he let himself breathe a single sigh of relief and hold his brothers close. The rest of the night passed, and, early in the morning, when the first light peeked through the uncovered edges of the windows and the blackout curtains, Soren heard Ashlyn stir. Within minutes, he watched as she stretched and let out a sigh and moan. She rolled over, blue-gray eyes flickering open. The moment she glanced at him, Ashlyn could see there were faint, dark circles under his eyes. The events of the evening before left her mind torn in dreams, and, even when she slept, it wasn't as restful as she wanted. She could only imagine how Soren was feeling at the moment. She suspected, after knowing him for this sh short amount of time, that he had either stayed up all night or, at the very least, didn't sleep well. Their eyes met, and, for the first time, there was no fear in meeting and maintaining the other's gaze. She raised her hand slightly and waved receiving a wary smile from her small companion. Ashlyn glanced over a little more and could see two heads of tussled hair at his sides. They were probably scared to be here, Ashlyn thought as she watched Soren rub their shoulders from over the covers. Ashlyn suspected Soren was very kind and thoughtful, but had only seen the reserved and self-preservative side of him. It was only recently that he had opened up slightly. In this one evening, she learned more about him than in the cumulative two weeks of brief conversation. 
it was telling of who he was and a testament to his character. Seeing him like this, a caring older brother, was definitely new. Seeing the risk he was willing to take by placing his life and the lives of his brothers into her hands and the trust he instantly bestowed upon her was mind-numbing. Even now, he had stayed up all night to make sure his brothers felt safe, even though he knew there was nothing to worry about. He could have let himself fall asleep and told his brothers he stayed up, but, like a silent guardian, he stood vigil all night by himself. For Ashlyn, it was endearing. She leaned up onto one elbow and, being careful, whispered, Good morning. Neither of the boys stirred, much to Soren's relief, and elected to mouth, Good morning, back to Ashlyn. His eyes lulled. Soren wanted desperately to go to sleep, but he needed to have another conversation with Ashlyn. He needed to have some kind of plan in place for him and his brothers when they woke up. Carefully, Soren untangled his arms from his brothers and lifted the covers so he could slip onto the edge of their bed. He had done this hundreds of times on cold winter nights and, with almost no disturbance, managed to place the brothers next to one another so they could keep warm without him. They barely stirred at the subtle jostling. They must be exhausted, Soren thought as he directed his attention to Ashlyn while stretching his sore muscles. Do you want to get some breakfast? asked Ashlyn. Soren felt his insides twist as he remembered they failed to eat dinner the night before when Soren's brothers revealed themselves. They only had some cracker corners because it was all they could probably keep down at the time. There was now an obvious predicament. Soren did want to get breakfast and help prepare something for his brothers. He also didn't want to leave his brothers. More than anything, and most surprising to him, Soren needed to talk to Ashlyn. He needed to decompress and go over everything that had festered the night before in his mind. Again, he couldn't leave his brothers. He couldn't scare them by leaving them and not being there when they woke up. Ashlyn could see this inner conflict in his eyes and managed to catch his attention as he looked back at her. I can go get it together if you want, she whispered. Soren hung his head and rubbed his eyes, pinching the bridge of his nose with his thumb and index finger. When he didn't answer, Ashlyn sensed there was something more bothering him, and prompted him. "'You okay?' asked Ashlyn. There were a million ways to answer, but Soren couldn't think of a single one in that moment. "'Want to talk about it?' His silence once again confirmed it. "'We could go into the kitchen.' At this suggestion, Soren shook his head. No. His voice, already a challenge to hear, was almost imperceptible. I... I don't want... I can't leave them. Not again. The boy stirred at the nearness of the sound. Soren tucked the blankets around them, and they seemed to be content enough to keep from waking. Ashlyn nodded slowly. She prepared to get up when she heard Soren speak again. Maybe if we stay on the bed, that way I can see them and they can see me if they wake up. The suggestion was new for Soren. Ashlyn hadn't known him to make these suggestions before. Sure, she whispered back. Um, do you think you can make it over here on your own? Soren's exhausted body shivered slightly, but he once again made eye contact with her as he brought his hand down from rubbing his eyes. It was in that look she understood. He wanted her to help. A sudden, nervous rush flooded her senses. The experience of holding Soren yesterday had been lost in the panic. Now that she had a moment, she realized how odd it felt to have his hands, his entire body, pressed into her palm. She had held him before when he was unconscious, but only on a few occasions to change the bandages on his leg. Ashlyn only now realized that for him to make the conscious decision must have been difficult. Still, he was asking for help now, despite the rules he had put forward. She felt her hand shake slightly as she placed it against the edge of the table. Soren stifled a yawn and staggered forward, 
broaching off another shudder and an obvious mental battle. Soren stepped onto her fingers, stabilizing himself against her thumb as he stood, and nodded to show he was ready. Ashlyn, as slowly and carefully as possible, lifted her hand the single foot from her table to the bed. Part of her brain marveled as she felt his feet against her skin and the way his entire hand grasped the tip of her thumb so he could stabilize himself. She set her hand onto the squishy surface of the bed and waited for the small man to move. For a moment, Soren wavered as Ashlyn placed her hand down. The sensation of standing on her hand was an odd one, but it was somehow a little easier to do since the events of yesterday. He stepped backward from her hand and onto the bed. He shuddered involuntarily again before practically collapsing backwards onto the top comforter of the mattress. They were silent for several minutes while Soren laid on his back and stared at the ceiling before he sat up and rubbed his eyes. Thank you, he said, slightly louder than before. He reached up and scratched the back of his head. I've been saying that a lot recently, huh? Ashlyn's lips tugged into a smirk. Not a bad thing in my book, she whispered. You didn't sleep, did you? The question was more of a statement to which Soren shook his head. No, he replied. They were nervous something might happen while we all slept. Ashlyn inhaled deeply, the statement stinging a little. I knew nothing would, but I wanted to make them feel safe. They deserved that much after everything. She didn't have words, and it was probably better that way. Soren sighed again, rubbing his temples. He didn't know where to begin. His mind was still swirling, and the exhaustion plaguing him was not helping his current state of mind. At least they're all right, he muttered finally. Ashlyn concurred with a nod. Soren's chest felt tight. His head pounded. Every muscle ached from being tense. I, I don't know what happened after I was gone, but I, I know I need to, even though I don't want to. I don't want to make them talk about it. I don't want to hear about what happened, but I know I need to hear it. I just wish I could know without making them relive it. Ashlyn watched Soren's body position pulled inward slightly. What do you want to know? She prompted. Soren groaned in partial frustration, his tired mind spilling every thought that came to him. A lot of things. I want to know why they were on their own. I hadn't prepared a lot, but we had supplies that should have lasted two weeks if rationed correctly. Soren couldn't stop the words from coming. They were pouring out of him, coming faster and faster in uncontrollable waves. I want to know why they were on their own trying to find supplies. More than anything, I want to know what happened to their father. Why that scumbag left them alone? They're not old enough to be on their own. I just started training them. Why did he think it was okay to leave them? Did he leave them? Where is he? What happened while I was gone? Soren shuddered, suddenly realizing his body was trembling. He feared he might be saying too much, that he may let something slip. But so much was still pent up, he couldn't will himself to stop, as if saying it out loud made it real and lifted some invisible burden from him. My brothers, my little brothers, they could have died, Ashlyn, they could have died, and I couldn't have done anything to save them. Soren's body continued to shake, he felt moisture clouding his vision. I can hardly take care of myself right now, how am I supposed to make them feel safe? How am I supposed to take care of them if I can't take care of myself? I just don't know what to do. Zoran wrapped his arms around his waist, not making eye contact, but simply staring at the comforter beneath him. His body shook as he fully realized what could have happened if he weren't injured and if Ashlyn hadn't come in time. His eyes threatened to spill tears, but they were too dry and tired. So... Soren simply took in shaky breaths, hoping he could calm himself. Ashlyn, seeing this, felt a pang in her heart. If this were one of her friends, she would reach out and rub on their shoulder. She would hug them or grasp their hand. She would tell them that everything was going to be alright. 
It was the rules that held her at bay. Soren didn't want to be touched or held without permission, and somehow Ashlyn felt her words would fall on deaf ears. He probably wouldn't appreciate being asked about it either. Her chest tightened. They hadn't known each other long, but Ashlyn felt there was a genuine connection with the person there, something she hadn't felt in a while since she moved to this apartment. She wanted him to know he wasn't alone. Winning the debate with herself, she decided to test the boundaries, knowing full well this could go horribly wrong for her and the little bit of trust she built. Ashlyn laid a hand on the bed, slowly, near Soren's leg. Soren didn't seem to notice. Carefully, she extended her finger and pressed it against his uninjured leg. Her finger easily dwarfed the small person's limb, and the sudden change of pressure made him jump slightly. He met her eyes, making Ashlyn's breath catch in her chest. But then something happened. Soren felt a sudden, unidentifiable pressure against his uninjured leg. It snapped him out of his mental spiraling, and he looked up suddenly to see Ashlyn had extended a single finger and had pressed it against the side of his leg ever so slightly. Somehow, the pressure was reassuring, and he found himself leaning into it. How did she know that was exactly what he needed at that moment? His hand had voluntarily reached out and laid on the top of her finger. Soren's touch was so soft, like the brush of a feather against her skin. What she thought was unnerving and made her tense and uneasy when she first met him was now a marvelous sensation. She could see a trace of a smile on Soren's face as he continued to process recent events and shake. Minutes passed. They said nothing. They moved nowhere. Soren eventually stopped shaking and let the warmth of Ashlyn's fingers seep into his hand and his leg. It was after this time that Soren spoke up, gazing into her eyes in sincerity. Thanks, he muttered as he smiled thoughtfully at her. Ashlyn nodded and smiled in kind. Anytime, she whispered back. She knew she was testing the boundaries but now seemed to be as good of a time as any to extend an offer of sanctuary. You know, you don't have to do this alone. You can all stay here. Get better. Soren curled his fingers into a light fist and tapped it against Ashlyn's finger. I couldn't ask that of you, he said, his body finally coming back under his control. I don't have the right to ask that of you. You've already done so much for me and I haven't done anything in return. If anything, I need to repay you. Ashlyn shook her head with a sigh. Let's just call it even, she said. Soren opened his mouth to respond when Ashlyn continued. Look, Soren, I've never considered myself to be a good person, and before I met you, I didn't make good life choices. Still don't, arguably. Ashlyn was quiet as Soren listened surprised that his interest was piqued. There was something in her eyes that held history, but Soren couldn't read it fast enough before it was gone. Helping you in some, I guess, weird way makes me feel like less of a terrible person, said Ashlyn. Just for now. Let's call it even. Seriously, no debts or anything to repay. Just one friend helping another. Soren wanted to ask Ashlyn what she meant and discuss this more, but heard a faint shifting of fabric. His eyes glanced over to the box, and he could see his youngest brother, Ray, beginning to sit up while rubbing his eyes. Both of them, seeing this, went into unspoken action. It was perfect, like they had rehearsed it a dozen times before. Ashlyn rotated the hand that was pressed against Soren's leg as he thrust himself up and onto her fingers. She tilted her wrist so he wouldn't fall as she quickly whisked him over to the bedside table. She set him down clumsily, making him stumble. But thankfully, she had removed her hand from Soren's body and back to the bed just in time. Soren knelt by the edge of their makeshift bed and smiled as Ray blinked the morning blur from his eyes. Hey, Soren said softly. Good morning. It was a close call and Soren hoped that if Ray did see what just transpired, that he would not freak out. 
Soren knew there was a monumental task ahead, but at least he wasn't in it alone.